Uh, the, the talk by Sebastian Defner unfortunately had to be canceled, but we now have uh, Devira Sagal, uh, and she will give a 30-minute talk on quantum flicker noise in atomic and molecular junctions. And Vera, I'll give you a heads up after, after 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. I will share my screen. Uh, just a moment. Let me organize it. Uh, can you hear me properly? Uh, we hear you and, and I, I see your uh, okay, screen as great. well as your cursor. Okay, uh, thank you very much for this very nice uh, organization. Uh, and today is about quantum stochastic thermodynamics. So I hope I fit in here. I'm going to tell you indeed about a platform and a specific experiment that very well fit into studying uh, some of the questions, uh, some of the topics that were raised in this conference. Um, yeah, about um, whether it's different bounds, trade-offs, or other questions regarding stochastic thermodynamics. So specific title, a quantum flicker noise in atomic and molecular junction. This work was done actually by an experimental group, and our role was just to support them, to model from the theoretical side, to suggest the, the theoretical picture. But uh, I will describe the experiment, and I will also try more broadly to describe this platform that, again, could be used, um, and we have used it, actually, to study other questions. So the reference to the, to the work is written here below. I will get back to that. And you can already see in this illustration what the system is about. I don't think it was mentioned uh, so much at uh, this conference. Um, so these red pencil-like uh, objects are actually gold electrodes. Um, so just plain gold. And as you can see, the system is, I hope you can see my hands, <laughs> uh, it's bent. And the idea here indeed is to control very carefully the separation between these gold electrodes such that eventually you can create a very um, small constriction, a very fine, uh, as you can see here in the, uh, the, yeah, the edge here, uh, only few atoms um, at this contact region such that you can realize quantum conductors. And in the extreme limit of actually uh, pulling it and again, stretching it in a very careful way, you can even break this junction. And um, in between you can uh, um, trap molecules and also study how molecules, single molecules conduct electrons. So that's experimental setup. Ignore the circuit here. It's uh, this circuit is for something else. But overall, you apply voltage and you measure charge current in the system. Uh, just a moment here. Uh, so how do we think about uh, the conduction of electrons in the system? A very rough uh, model, and I will get back to that uh, later on. Uh, we think about this C is supposed to represent this very narrow constriction in between. Um, and since it's so small, just few atoms in this gap, uh, or even one atom. Uh, the pictures that we have in mind is that electrons transfer this region coherently. So the mean free path is just longer than this uh, constriction length, such that there are no scattering processes within this um, C region. Um, outside that, yeah, these are the other regions. I will get back to them later. Of course, there could be defects. There are other scatterers, um, and life are more hectic. <laughs> Um, so what do they measure in this experiment? As I've said, they apply voltage, they measure, measure charge current. There are also other um, possibilities. You can also apply temperature difference. Um, and this is really just my MATLAB depiction of here is a charge current as a function of time. And again, if you can watch me, yeah, you get this uh, fluctuating uh, current. Uh, you can just watch, uh, you can just calculate the average current. And from there, you can already gain a lot about the system, uh, whether there are interesting interactions between electrons or between electrons and phonons, electron and the environment. Um, so oftentimes people just ignore the fluctuations, but this is where we are here this week, trying to find out what we can learn from fluctuations. So overall in my group, uh, we have been indeed looking at uh, current noise for charge, or as you have just heard before, for energy transport, motivated by different uh, questions. And very briefly, just to lay down, yeah, what could be the, what are the several aspects of noise? Um, as we just have heard, looking at noise can help us understand whether a methodology is actually thermodynamically consistent. Redfield, for example, suffers from uh, issues, fundamental issues. Uh, question number two, and that concerns the talk, uh, my talk. What information can we gather, can we gain from current noise that is obscured in the mean current itself? And number three, which I will touch very briefly, but it was a motivation for me and many talks that we've heard, um, noise also means something about the performance of your system in terms of the thermodynamically, uh, in terms of trade-off relations, uh, in terms of bounds, and, and I will also say something about that. 
oh yeah, so I have here I just uh, some illustrations, okay, uh, for the um, uh, second law at the microscopic level, question about devices, what we can learn for about charge transport and questions about trade-off or bounds uh, concerning fluctuations, not just the mean power, output power uh, or efficiency. So this is an outline of a different talk that I've never given, <laughs> I guess my dream talk about noise, uh, which uh, I'm only going to talk about the flicker noise highlighted in yellow. But in my dream talk, I uh, divide it to three parts. I, will, I would have talked about these interesting relationships um, that many people have worked on. In my group, we focused on what they mean in the quantum domain, the thermodynamic uncertainty relation, um, this bound uh, at the center of the page on a uh, tighter bound on efficiency, or uh, yeah, I will say actually a few words about it in the next slide. Um, and then I will tell you about different measurements. So we have been working with an experimental group. My group is only doing theory, uh, but we have been collaborating with an experimental group and trying to understand from, yeah, from the theory side, different aspects of noise. And finally, method development, uh, which is also close to our heart. Uh, but again, today, just uh, for the flicker noise and yeah, maybe in the future. So here is Matthew once more. I wanted to advertise another project of him from last year, which is uh, relevant to, the, to my talk here. Um, uh, but that's another aspect of this uh, type of system, um, electronic conducting system, you can see here in illustration below. So one can test the uh, thermodynamic uncertainty relation, and this is a y-axis here. And our point in this study was uh, to point out that in the quantum domain, you can actually fully violate it. So that's a black line here. You can design the conducting junction um, such, and in the picture here in the inset, you can see the transmission function such that you get something which is really not interesting because there is no bound. It's really the uncertainty relation is such that the, yeah, from, the last, from the right side, from the lower bound, you just get zero. However, our point in this study was that once you get beyond this idealized limit of a very perfect boxcar type transmission function, uh, you actually recover uh, the cost precision trade of relation, and that's a dashed blue line. Um, so I'm, I will not dwell on this study, but I encourage you to look at it. And another work related to fluctuations, which again involved Matthew, now I realize, um, um, and again, um, can be realized with the platform that I'm going to discuss in more details. Uh, concern this interesting um, um, yeah, uh, bounds. So what do we have here? Um, this We proved it in linear response and uh, we also tested it beyond linear response. It's generally valid, though people have demonstrated violations uh, in some special cases. So what we have here, if we focus on a heat engine, let's say thermoelectric power generator that is uh, illustrated here for quantum dot system. Uh, so the line at the center is supposed to represent a quantum dot, and at the left and right, we have two metal electrodes, a different chemical potentials, and a different temperatures. And the idea is to use heat um, and generate work in the form of electron transfer, form of power output, uh, electrical power output. So the efficiency, we all know what it means. It's really just about the output power over the input heat. So that would be just a the efficiency when I think about the means. What we have here at the center, which we refer to as eta two, was the same uh, type of ratio of power output power over input heat, but now for the variance. So this is what we refer to as eta two. It looks like efficiency, but uh, uh, for the uh, fluctuations, and on the right-hand side is a kernel efficiency. So this is an interesting uh, tighter bound for efficiency, or you can also think about it as a bound on uh, relative fluctuations for input heat and output power. And again, we tested it and tried to understand implications, and it can be also tested with atomic scale and molecular junctions. Okay, so finally, to the type of uh, to present this platform, um, I've been working in the last five years with uh, the group of uh, Orenthal from the Weizmann Institute, and uh, back then his graduate student of Phil. And again, you can see here the type of experimental system that they have been working on. Now, if, uh, again, it's just a scheme, but uh, trying to show the atoms uh, doing the yeah in the game. Uh, so this is all gold, and again, it's bended with. That's the way they control the separation between the two metal electrodes. And they can control it such that there are a few atoms in the region, in the contact region, or ultimately only one. And what they would measure, the very basic quant quantity would be just the electrical conductance. Yeah, So it's really just the voltage, a current over voltage uh, in units of the quantum of conductance G naught. So what you see here, let's focus on the top one in blue. Uh, this is conductance histogram, as we refer to it. Uh, so you just see counts, and what does it mean? They repeat the experiment many, many times. 
um, generating such junctions uh, with few atoms in the contact region, measuring the conductance, and again, reforming the junction. So these are the histograms. And as you can see, for example, you get many points around conductance, which here in the units of G0 is about one. And that refers to, according to theory, having about single, al single atom in the contact region. Uh, but you also have, as you can see, conductance at uh, multiple values of uh, quantum of conductance. And again, the theory here um, describes uh, or corresponds to having uh, multiple atoms in the contact region. Uh, for the, so the top uh, blue one was just a pure gold uh, contact region. And uh, the one below co concerns a situation where the system is peppered with hydrogen molecules. Uh, and the main distinction here, if you look here at the tail, is that you start to notice that you do get some junctions, some of these uh, setups, where the conductance is below one. And in this situation where the conductance is so low, these are situations when you actually break the junction. There is no longer a, this single gold atom at the contact region, but actually only a single hydrogen molecule sitting there in whatever conformation it likes. Uh, so that's why there is some, yeah, as you can see some variance in the what could be the value of the conductance, uh, but this corresponds to having single molecule in the junction. So this is a basic measurement of just electrical conductance, um, but obviously, as I've mentioned before, they are also doing noise measurement, so not just the charge current, but also focusing on not just the mean current, but also its fluctuations. So the basic um, uh, yeah, observable here would be the power spectrum of the current, and that is S of omega. So yeah, you take the current um, and you have the fluctuations around the mean, and they take the Fourier transform, absolute value square, and that's what we refer to as the power spectrum of the current. Um, experimentally, they would get something quite messy. So that's uh, this figure at the right-hand side, that's a power spectrum as a function of frequency. And the different lines, uh, as you can see, there are many, each one is, a, it, it's all for one single junction, but changing the voltage. Um, and the, the, the chaos at the center corresponds to what happens with the detector. So ignore this mess at the end. So overall, you can see that the power spectra has different regions. Um, there is a, what we refer to as a white noise region where the uh, power spectrum does not depend on frequency. And you can extract a lot of interesting information about the system from there. And then there is a region, here it is, uh, which we refer to as one over F noise, uh, because if you analyze it more carefully, indeed it decays as one over F or one over frequency. And it has different names, pink noise, flicker noise, RTS sometimes, yeah. Uh, but that's what I refer to as a, a flicker noise. Um, so generally when a Owens group and other groups in this community have measured the power spectrum, they focused on the white noise component. And again, tried to understand what oftentimes in this community is referred to as short noise. And it has been it has been used in the last, is it already 30 years or so, to study many interesting effects in correlated electron system, for example, or electron phonon effects, uh, just based, uh, just by watching the noise and analyzing it. Um, and, but today I will focus on the one over F noise. And indeed the question that Owen came up with a couple of years ago was, is it really just garbage? <laughs> because that's how people treated this one over F noise in this community for a long time. It was really just a nuisance. Uh, ignoring this component of the noise. Um, but the question is whether it actually tells us something useful about quantum transport. Um, and that's what we uh, were about here. And yeah, I guess I have about 10 more minutes to get to that. Uh, but before that, I wanted to mention that one over F noise is uh, very ubiquitous in many systems in physics, not just in electronic devices. It has been a hot topic for many years. Still, there is a broad community that is very much after it. Uh, so for electronic devices, the agreement is that it's not very exciting. I mean, this yeah, this component of the noise that you see over there at low frequency, um, it's, a, it's a nuisance for measurements for detectors, because as you can see, when you go to low frequencies, it's, it diverges. But the physical origin, which people were after and quite curious about, at least for electronic devices, it's probably because of different defects in the system. So because of imperfections in the design of, in these materials, where you have defects that oftentimes are referred to as two-level system fluctuators that can change their, their mobile or their, they can change their conformation such that uh, they change the, they lead to changes to fluctuations in the current. So that's a general agreement in the community and indeed in physics or in engineering in the last decade or even more, these studies of one over F noise were very much in the engineering community. 
just trying to uh, get rid of it rather than think more uh, deeply whether there is something interesting quantum mechanically that you can learn about your system. Uh, yeah, so here's a collection of reviews, you know, when a field already has many reviews, it means that it's maybe not so exciting. Uh, so there are reviews in the lab already a century, uh, moving from solid state systems to graphene devices, and even more so in the last 10 years or so, thinking about one over F noise, indeed more creatively, um, what can we learn about it, um, thinking about single molecule devices or uh, gra single graphene sheet. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, this last slide I also wanted to mention that one of the FNOIC revival also because of quantum technologies, uh, it is a hindrance uh, in superconducting qubits and uh, this is a conference from last year, very interesting, again, touching the one of the noise, this low frequency noise um, from different uh, directions. Okay, so back to this uh, slide or back to this picture of, uh, now it's just an illustration of the power spectrum noise as a function of frequency but again, at high enough frequencies, we see it uh, getting to the white noise region, uh, but low frequency, yeah, we have this one over F noise. And again, people asked, where does it come from? Is it because some fluctuations in the contact region? Is it because a molecule changes conformation? So that maybe there are um, slow processes where the molecule moves between different states. Um, is it because rearrangement processes, again, of gold atoms maybe in the contact? Um, um, so these are the types of questions that were interrogated. Now, what theory are we going to use um, to actually try to model this effect? So far, what we did, which is we think appropriate for the systems that were studied, but of course, once going to more um, rich system, one would need to include electron-electron effects. What we have used so far is a theory of non-interacting electrons, a very basic one. Um, it's called Landauer scattering formalism, as you can see quite uh, from some time ago. Uh, quantum coherent transport, the idea is that the mean free path of electron is longer than the length of the size of this constriction. So this picture is taken from a different context, but I just liked it because of, again, you can see these atoms around and the size of the constriction. Um, and again, the idea is that atomic contact is atomic scale and at the atomic scale. Uh, so how do we think about it theoretically with this quantum coherent transport? The main um, quantity that we consider is the so-called transmission probability or transmission function, which is energy dependent in general. So the, the conductance, the electrical conductance one can show is given by the sum, or overall it's given by the total transmission probability and the transmission probability can be decomposed into contributions of different so-called channels. What are these channels? It really depends on the system. Um, if you are into something that is at the level of mesoscopic or even microscopic, something like waveguides, this could be transverse modes um, that are the different modes of your system, and each of them could contribute different uh, contribution to the overall conductance. At the atomic scale or molecular scale, the different channels really correspond to different orbitals that line up together to uh, contribute to the conduction. So there is a lot of there is a, big, a deep connection between the transmission function and the actual atomistic or molecular level picture of what actually drive, allows electrons to tra transfer the system. But uh, again, from the theoretical part, uh, the creature that we are going to look at uh, is a transmission probability. And considering that there are multiple, possible multiple channels, multiple orbitals that allow transport of electrons in the system. Now, if you just measure the conductance, I showed you before the histogram, you just know that it's a total transmission that uh, it gives you. Uh, but you don't know how many channels are possibly contributing and what is the relative or what is the contribution of each one of them. So you are really missing uh, yeah, some insight into what's going inside your system by just measuring the total conductance. And that's where noise measurements come to play. Uh, this is an example, at least, where they can be useful. From noise measurement, you can start to dig more deeply into your system and find more information about these different transmission channels and their contribution. And obviously, if there are interactions, you get into another application of uh, noise measurements. But today, I'm just going to focus on this uh, uh, decomposition of total transmission into the separate channels. You've yes, got yeah. about 10 minutes left. Okay, thank you. 
Um, so yeah, so this is where I'm finally getting indeed into the experiment. Uh, again, the contribution experimental work was done by Oren and his student from my group, uh, Abhai and Junji, a, a former postdoctoral fellows contributed uh, to the modeling. So this is again from the experiment. They measure the, as you can see here, the noise as a function of frequency. Uh, the different lines are just for repeating uh, experiments, uh, forming again these junctions. And first they verify this one over F uh, dependence. And the basic question was, yeah, can we learn something useful about from this one over F component about the system? So here is a summary of the results. And as time allows, I will uh, get into more details. I already told you that the total electrical conductance of the system is just given by the total conductance. So you, by measuring the left side, the conductance, you don't know about the decomposition into different channels. What people have been doing in the last 20 years or so, they also measure the short noise, which is a white noise regime here. And from the theory, what one can show is that it's given by this interesting connection, again, between transmission contributions. So as you can see, the second equation is distinct in terms of the functional form of transmission from the first one, meaning that if you have, let's say, two channels, you can play with these two uh, equations. If you measure both the conductance and the short noise, and now you can start to analyze and find out uh, what are the channels and what is uh, their contribution. But these are just two equations. <laughs> and what we showed in this work, and that's uh, indeed the main uh, contribution here, um, the third equation, and we showed that the flicker noise here, there is obviously a one over F dependence, which is not, uh, I omitted it here from here, but the pre-factor of this one over F, again, depends on the transmission probability in this uh, form. And this form is distinct from the short noise, it's distinct from the form of the electrical conductance. And as such, it's another knob to learn about the transmission uh, channels in the system. Uh, so, so again, from the fundamental side, our point is that the one over F noise emerges indeed from mobile defects in the junction. So this is a picture that I'm trying to show here. Um, there are some, yeah, you can see the red and blue lines. There are some four electrons crossing the system. There are some scatterers that lead to this um, reflection uh, probability. So this is the origin of the one over F noise, just having these mobile defects. So that's the usual story. What is interesting is here is that the total transmission is given by this superposition of processes of electron going directly left to right or electron doing this uh, uh, process where it's scattered by these uh, mobile defects such that the pre-factor of the one over F noise does tell us something useful. It does tell us about the channel decomposition. Um, so that's the main story here. The one over F dependence itself is, again, sorry, boring, uh, but the pre-factor does convey a useful information about the quantum transport of electrons in the system. Uh, so just a sketch of the derivation here, I will not uh, get into the details. The sketch is that the total transmission probability for an electron is given by an interference process where some electrons, oh, so not some electrons, one pathway is going directly. So that's a black one and that's a one here. Um, but then there are two other processes to the lowest order in the in the yeah, in collecting these processes where either there is a scattering by a defect at the left side or there is a scattering of, by a defect uh, at the right side. And overall, the transmission amplitude is yeah, it's given by the uh, interference of these effects. And when I calculate from here the current and then the power spectrum, uh, I will find the, the one over F contribution showing up due to these defects. But furthermore, I will see this tau, when I take the absolute value square, it will become tau square. And from the reflection amplitude, I will get the additional one minus tau. So here I will just summarize uh, what we can learn from this. Uh, so this is a power spectrum. Again, the details you can see in the supplementary material, how we derive this expression. But this is from the theory part, our prediction of how the power spectrum should look like. There is a voltage dependence. It was verified experimentally, V squared. There is a one over F dependence. Okay, well, that's one I can verify. But the interesting part, again, is that the prefactor uh, tells you about this interference of electrons, and it does depend on the transmission probability uh, in this unique way. Um, so in the last few minutes, I'll just mention uh, what experimentally they did. Uh, we came up with this uh, expression, and from the experimental side, they repeatedly generated, constructed these junctions. So each dot here, each circle corresponds to an experiment. And from the theory uh, side, we in the gray region, uh, we predicted where they should find uh, junctions, where, um, yeah, what are the possible values for the flicker noise as a function of conductance. So that's a, yeah, that's a region where you you can me measure flicker noise. 
um, oh, let's see yeah, the, the magnitude that uh, you can measure for the system. And indeed, I hope it's convincing uh, most of the points, say, uh, or we could at least rationalize what's happening, uh, let's say, in the weird region in terms of the lower bound also in the upper bound um, in terms of how many channels and what's their relative contribution. Um, and furthermore, I will skip that. Another useful, um, oh, oh, this is actually an application of this study. I mentioned to you that there are now three equations that we can use to decompose the transmission, total transmission into the separate channels. So if you focus, for example, on point number one, that's a measurement of the final factor, the white noise, short noise measurement, as well as the electrical conductance. So if you just use these two equations, the first and the second, you get the blue regions, which means that you have quite some uncertainty in terms of what are the channels and what's the yeah, what's their contribution? You just know that there are maybe four channels and the second one contribute about point, between 0 0.05 to 0 0.2. So there's quite some uncertainty. However, once you yeah, put together the information from the flicker noise, you get this red um, now um, predictions for what are the different uh, values for the channels. And as you can see, you can get a very uh, significantly narrower um, prediction or, uh, or result for what's possible for the transmission values. Um, so I will quickly summarize what's next for the flicker noise. Um, it's a, an ongoing work thinking about thermometry. This was a, this flicker noise that I've uh, described was activated by voltage or was uh, probed by voltage. One can also use a flicker noise for thermometry. Uh, from the this one over F component, one can probe more the material properties. And today I described situation where we assume again, based on other studies that electron-electron repulsion effects are not significant, but one can design systems purposely with interesting electron uh, or many body effects in general and use a flicker noise again to uh, try to probe them. Uh, so the take-home message is that a uh, noise is actually a diagnostic tool. I think that was a general message from this uh, conference. And I just wanted to, that's the last uh, point now to touch again is something that um, maybe goes back to general uncertainty relation or bounds in games that theoreticians like, but we can probe experimentally with the same platform. So this is a study from two years ago where we use the same platform with Oren here again from the experimental side in Ophir, and we looked at this uh, thermodynamic uncertainty relation that was studied uh, a lot in the classical stochastic thermodynamics, and we looked at it in the, again in the quantum regime using these atomic scale junctions. Uh, we wanted to see, as I told you, before one can actually fully violate it. Uh, we wanted to see in these systems what happens. Um, here it is, that's the uncertainty, uh, where is it? Oops, sorry. That's the uncertainty relation, uh, uh, thermodynamic uncertainty relation. Um, it's plotted here, okay, without too many details in this system, it's satisfied, but we gave a prediction uh, that when gamma, which is actually interaction effects in the system are strong enough, there is a possibility to actually break down and violate this uh, classical uh, result. So with that, I would like to just acknowledge my uh, group and my collaborators. And again, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, th thank you for that uh, for that very, very nice talk. I certainly agree with you that noise is not always a nuisance. Uh, we should all love noise. Uh, and with that, um, let me open up the floor for questions. Questions. It was a very, very clear talk. Um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> so, um, uh, actually, since since some of, since since we don't have the the the, the final speaker here, uh, and and I know that some of the earlier talks went went quickly. If there are any follow up questions or comments or discussions that anyone would like to have um, related to any of the talks dur during this session, um, uh, the, the floor is open. Um, I may, if I, I can, I would like to Absolutely. comment about, about the question actually regarding the previous, uh, the talk of Matthew. Um, so related to the point about the V model, uh, Matthew responded, to, replied to that, but I wanted to, to emphasize, we were not claiming that this effect of coherence in the V model is a new effect. We, uh, we yeah, it has been analyzed beautifully with previous works. So that was a new element in our study. As Matthew mentioned, uh, what we wanted indeed to, it, we use this system as a case study 
to start to find out what different master equations uh, predict for it. Um, so we um, there is a beautiful literature indeed on this system about coherences at equilibrium, out of equilibrium, and so on. Okay, Th thanks for clarifying that. And I see we do have a question in the chat. Uh, Jose Daniel, would you like to ask unmute yourself and ask that question? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I would like to to ask a, a professor. Finally, in your in your results, which is the uh, the origin of the one over f square noise, no, of these three okay. regimes in the noise? Yeah. Okay, so you are asking about the one over f square. <laughs> I know the one over f because uh, in our system, uh, the functional form was actually one over f, not the one over f square. Um, what I can tell you that they found was, I didn't highlight it enough. They test, they uh, con consider two systems, one with when it was just plain gold. And then actually there was no one over F component or it was extremely weak. And the second system, which I mentioned briefly, they peppered it with hydrogen molecules. And once they have these hydrogen molecules around, that's when they saw this one over F component. So they, we didn't do mole atomic scale simulations. That's actually something really interesting for me. But the pictures that we have in mind is that these hydrogen molecules are small enough to <laughs> penetrate the gold. So they are sitting inside and they are mobile. They can diffuse on the surface or inside. And that's where, um, yeah, they can lead to indeed changes in the temporal changes in the scattering cross section for electrons. So that's for this system, at least. <laughs> Okay, it's really thank, because thank. it is that we put there intentionally. <laughs> thanks for the question as oh, well. Okay. As thank you very much. Uh, any other questions, questions or comments related to this talk or, or any of the other talks? Okay, if not, I suggest we uh, let, let's thank collectively all of the speakers for for very, very nice talks um, and uh, thank everybody. I thank everybody for attending this uh, final session of the of the workshop and indeed for attending for attending all, all of the other sessions as well. So I'm going to stop recording now.